Welcome and thank you for joining us on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We just want to say we're so delighted that our friends who join us in the Lexio Reflection are sharing this um, way of praying with other people. And so we have today hit 1,800 subscribers. And of course my new target, I hope you'll agree, mm -hmm. is 2,000. Oh. So don't stop, keep spreading the good news. The sky's the limit. Part of the good news is that I mentioned we will put a sheet on our website, lexiodivina.com.au, and what I'm putting on today is a, a longer version of something we put on before, 20 points about helping you to pray, and this is a longer article dealing with those issues. Thank you. So we will now read the scripture for today, and um, starting now. If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go in search of that one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven, the one that, I beg your pardon, so it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. I'm going to repeat that again. I think I've got it wrong again. Beg your pardon, Pat. Just go to the thing. So, is it not... Before you do that, please, then again, would you read the verse afterwards? I forgot to tell you that. It's uh, about Peter saying that Peter came and seven. said, okay. Just that one verse. Mm -hmm. you okay. Mind. So, mm -hmm. so I'm back to this one. Yeah, so, is it not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost? If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen, even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another, member, uh, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. If you are following the text yourself, you'll notice that we've cheated. We actually read two verses before the set gospel text and one verse at the end. And so often, that's the context. The story about the lost sheep, the point being made is that, that God doesn't want any one of these little ones to be lost. And what's going to happen in, in the text that we have now is we're going to talk about someone who could be lost and how to handle that situation. This text now is occurring in Matthew's discourse on the church. So it's about the life of the church. And what we're seeing here is what to do if somebody is showing a failing. And then we read an extra verse because the next section is going to be about how to forgive people that might be in that situation. So if we keep it in terms of, it's talking about the church and it's not a judicial thing, it's a pastoral thing. And the point being made here is that what the person, um, it's being addressed to a particular person. Now the person it's being addressed to is not the one that's done the sin. But what, what should that person do about someone whom uh, he or she recognises is doing something that's out of keeping with the community? And the process here has roots in the Old Testament, but we know as it, was, as it is described here, it was practised at the time of Jesus, and this is probably the way they did it um, in the Matthean church. So the climax of it is to take it to the church. Now here is the other use of the word church. Remember, chapter 16, mm -hmm. I will build my church 
and here is a reference to church. Mm -hmm. And of course we said what it was, it's the community. In this situation, I think it's more the local community mm -hmm. because we're talking about a, a particular issue that is there. So the issue is, um, it's not so much the person, but the issue, is this issue a good issue or, or a bad issue, as it were? So the church is not judging, judging the person, but it's, it's sort of judging the issue. And I, I think the point being made is that you take it to the church, and it's not the church as a judicial body, but if everybody in the church disagrees with you, there must be something wrong with what you're thinking if you're going to continue to belong to this particular community. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more that pastoral way um, of doing things um, that is uh, the issue. And the binding and loosing here, I think we have saw that in chapter 16 with Peter. Uh, Peter, there's no restrictions on Peter. What I think is here, it's more given to the local community and the local community has the power to, to uh, excommunicate. I mean, that's what treating them like a, um, a tax collector. <laughs> and that's, I mean, and, and of course, there's else other situations in the, in the text, in the scriptures, where this is meant to bring people back. Yeah. The whole point here is, how do I get this person to come back to the community? That's the point um, that is being made. Mm. And then the point there about um, um, the prayer, that where two or three people agree on asking, so it's, it's a prayer thing. Um, and the point being made, I think, is that it's not just two people asking, it's three people asking, because where two are there, Jesus is yes. present with them. And that's where the advocacy of the prayer comes from, that it's, um, it's Jesus, the thing. So it, the presence of Jesus you know, is strong in Matthew, the very last words of the Gospel, I will be with you all days, even till the end of time. So, so really this is a, a little sort of in-house way of dealing with difficulties. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'd recommend it for today. I have a saying that uh, when it comes to the lives of other people, mind your own business. <laughs> and I, I, I do think what we can learn from here is that we can pray in that situation. In other words, if we see people that we feel are not doing things that are in keeping with the church, my first step would be to focus prayer in that area. It's a much more difficult thing um, to intervene if you're not a leadership person that has the responsibility um, to intervene. But I think we can all focus prayer uh, on those people. Well, there's really so much really in this short piece of scripture, but I, what I suppose struck me was this giving an example of a community in dialogue. There is this sense that people are listening to each other, hearing each other, responding. Um, but I'm a bit like David. It was probably not imagined there'd be 1.3 billion Catholics across the world when this community was being described here. But at that local level, I think that sense of dialogue and listening is a very healthy way for a group of people True. to place on the table what their concerns are. And I don't think in any situation it is easy, but I'm also thinking the rule of Benedict where they talk about the voice of the youngest in the community, that listening to the voices of people in the community and how they're experienced, I think it creates the air and light to keep communities alive. So that latter point, Virginia, I, I guess that's topical today, isn't it, in terms of synodality mm. and what Pope Francis is inviting us to, to listen yes. to, to everyone. I couldn't help think just from the last sentence that we shared about <coughs> two or three gathered in my name, bear in mind, and uh, Rabbi, um, uh, Rabbi um, Hananiah, I think it was 135, I didn't know this, I don't know who Rabbi Hananiah is, but I just thought it was interesting. He said, when two or three people gather together to reflect on the word of the law, God is present. Mm. Yes. And it would, that just struck me in, in terms of this, the presence of God. And if you put it back into the context you mentioned, David, um, of how we approach this, if it's in prayer, then God is at the very heart of it. Mm. And should not that presence change the reality 
It doesn't mean it's going to happen like that, but no. yeah. And I, and I think this was a community that was um, filled with the enthusiasm mm. of, of people starting, as it were. Mm. And I think an ideal situation, this could happen. Mm. Yeah. But it, it's something that would need to be done more carefully today, mm. I think, than in the past. Mm. Mm. Uh, thank you. Well, we invite you now to consider how this piece of scripture is speaking to you today. What do you notice? Well, welcome back. We invite you now to listen to the scripture a second time. If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not so it, it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have, gained, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I truly tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but, I tell you, seventy-seven times. For me, on the second reading, it was that concept of not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Uh, personally, the quicker I can do that, the easier my life flows. But um, I need always a bit of prayer beforehand before I can move into that space. But I think it's very good advice. Yes, I... I I found that there's plenty of people that I could see in the church that <laughs> doing things that, uh, that may not seem to be good, at least to me. But I, I feel that um, I need to focus on them in prayer, not not in mm. criticism. In other words, that um, I think that comes out of the the um, gospel that we've just read. That um, um, to to intercede for them mm. rather than to judge them and. Mm. and and sort of enter into a judicial process. This is a pastoral mm. text here. So that was my thought that I should perhaps look at some of the people that I I might have criticised, but rather pray for them. I, know. I know I've said this to teachers in work that we were doing, Virginia, but I, I put it in the context of myself and, and in terms of preaching, that as I stand in, in the pulpit and look out over the community that's gathered, and I can't say that I love them, then I shouldn't stay in the pulpit and preach. And it just brought home to me the significance, the importance of community. And even when there are issues within the community, the place that the community serves in its gathering and aware of who is at the heart of that community and I in that community praying with them that hopefully we are able to change an attitude, a perspective, and an engage with one another 
and in the service of Christ in another way. Well, we invite you now to consider how the gospel is resonating and what it is that you would like to put in place. How would you like to um, move forward in your life? So taking a moment now to consider what is it that you'd like to do. Well, making that decision is just the beginning because our good intentions may stay good intentions unless we uh, consciously ask God for the help and the strength to put that into action and to persevere. So we take a moment now to ask God to, um, to be with us and to help us achieve what it is that we've set out to do. Well, we're delighted that you joined us on this Lexio Reflection today. Um, as always, we say lexiodivina.com.au is our website. We invite you to go there and perhaps you can look at previous um, videos of the same um, time. It's listed under the years A, B and C and um, to invite your friends to subscribe. But we'll conclude now with the uh, prayer of the 23rd Sunday in ordinary time. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through Christ our Lord.